What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. First, I want to give my thoughts and prayers to everybody in Mississippi that is dealing with the major water crisis that has been going on here for days. Actually, this has been going on for a long time. Take a listen. As Jackson, Mississippi continues to face a clean water shortage, officials said the crisis is a result of years-long issues. The city's main water treatment facility was damaged after a high level of flooding due to heavy rainfall over the last week. The damaged facility resulted in a loss of water pressure in areas that receive water from the plant, including Jackson. The flood water also changed the overall composition of the water, making it difficult to treat and dangerous. The city's mayor said staffing shortages, system issues, and equipment failures have all contributed to the water plant failure. I have said on multiple occasions that it's not a matter of if our system would fail, but a matter of when our system would fail. This is a set of accumulated problems based on deferred maintenance that has not taken place over decades. The mayor said it could cost billions of dollars to fix or replace the water plant and to solve the ongoing crisis. And meanwhile, there's thousands and thousands of people left without water stretching for miles and miles of lines waiting for clean drinking water. This is just one of the issues plaguing our country. And, um, I mean, you can let me know your thoughts if this is because of climate change or not. And meanwhile, in Congress, there's a major bill brewing right now um, on behalf of Senator Joe Manchin. And Senator Bernie Sanders is opposed to it. And it's in Congress brewing right now. Here's what Senator Bernie Sanders has to say about this bill. Um, take a listen. Mr. President, as the father of four kids and the grandfather of seven, I very much wish that I did not have to say what I'm going to say. But the most serious challenge facing our country and the entire world far and away, is in fact the existential threat of climate change. That is not the opinion of Bernie Sanders, who failed physics in college. That is the, what the scientific community is telling us in a virtually unanimous voice. The latest report from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, is very clear and it is very foreboding. If the United States, China, Russia, and the rest of the world do not act extremely aggressively in cutting carbon emissions, our planet will face enormous and irreversible damage. In fact, the world that we will be living, leaving to our kids and to future generations will become increasingly unhealthy and uninhabitable. That's not Bernie Sanders. That is the virtual unanimous conclusion of the scientists who study this issue. But the truth is, we don't need the scientists or another study to tell us what's happening. We see it with our own eyes here in the United States and all over the world. The American people today and people throughout the globe are seeing the devastating impact climate change is having on their communities and their families with their own eyes. That is what they are seeing right now as I speak. And please understand, and maybe the most important point I want to make this morning, is that everything being equal, what is happening right now will become worse and worse and worse. 
This is not, oh boy, we had a torrential rain. Oh boy, ain't it hot? Everything being equal, what we are seeing today will become worse in years to come. Let's just take a brief look at what's happening right now in the United States and around the world. The past eight years have been the hottest years in recorded history. Right now, the western half of the United States is experiencing its worst drought in over 1,200 years. Right now, in California, Nevada, and Utah, they are experiencing record-breaking heat waves. Historic rainfall and devastating floods took place over a five-week stretch this summer in eastern Kentucky, eastern Illinois, St. Louis, Missouri, Death Valley, California, and Dallas, Texas. These are supposed to be a once-in-a-thousand-year torrential rainfalls, and we're seeing them coming all together within a few weeks. Right now, Europe is experiencing its worst drought in over 500 years. And let's remember, when we talk about drought, it's not only, boy, is it hot, it impacts agricultural production and the quantity and quality of food that we eat. Mr. President, a massive heat wave in Spain and Portugal killed more than 2,000 people in July. Historically hot weather in London and China literally melted bridges, airplane runways, and rooftops. Let me repeat that. The extremely hot weather in London and in China this summer literally melted bridges, rooftops, and airplane runways with all of the consequences that that has. Mr. President, record-breaking forest fires in Europe have already burned 1.6 million acres of land, 56 percent more than the previous record set in 2017. And that is a size that is over eight times bigger than New York City. Record-breaking drought in China has caused parts of the Yangtze River to completely dry up. The Yangtze River is the third largest river in the world. It is the source of drinking water for 400 million people. Catastrophic rainfall and massive floods have been going on for weeks in Pakistan, killing at least 1,200 people and displacing another 10 million as one third of Pakistan is now under water. So what do you think? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Senator Bernie Sanders is opposed to this new per permitting bill um, that will grant permitting to oil and gas companies as well as clean energy companies easier. Also, Bernie Sanders and the progressive Democrats following him saying that he'll vote against keeping the government open and vote for a government shutdown if Manchin's disastrous side deal on energy is included. And progressives saying this is a little bit of a payback for the slimmed down last package on the Inflation Reduction Act, which was supposed to include a lot more for Americans. But Senator Joe Manchin had his way and was able to kind of write the bill. And now progressive Democrats are kind of getting back at Joe Manchin, saying, well, no, maybe we'll get to write the deal this time. Bernie Sanders says he'd oppose a short-term government funding bill if it includes Manchin's deal on energy. The bill is set to ease regulations around building a new oil pipeline. He also warned of a looming revolt among House Democrats and that a short-term government funding bill, if Democratic leaders attach legislation meant to ease construction of crude oil pipelines and other energy infrastructure. Uh, Bernie, the Vermont Independent, wrote, I will not vote for any bill that makes it easier for big oil to destroy the planet 
and that includes approving the Mountain Valley Pipeline. The continuing resolution must not be held hostage by big oil, which is what Manchin is uh, going for here, which ironically is in Joe Manchin's home state of West Virginia. Now, Joe Manchin pushes back and said, if I thought it was for damaging the climate, I would have never done it. We're talking about some solar farms, wind farms, but we have to have fossil horsepower that we need right now as well, just to kind of show both sides of this. But remember that Joe Manchin has been scrutinized heavily in the past. You can see this headline here from the New York Times, how Joe Manchin aided coal and earned millions for himself. This is right here from the New York Times. This is one of the front page headlines here uh, from a few months ago that says, at every step of his political career, Joe Manchin helped a West Virginia power plant that is the sole customer of his private coal business that he's a part owner of. Along the way, he blocked ambitious climate action and earned himself millions of dollars. Another headline here from Politico says how Manchin used politics to protect his family coal company. Selling scrap coal has earned Senator Joe Manchin millions of dollars over three decades, and his and he used his political position to protect the fuel from laws and regulations that threaten his family's business. These are from major publications like Politico and the New York Times. So, I mean, I mean these are major, major publications. Uh, you can let me know your thoughts on that. So a lot of people are very critical when it comes to Joe Manchin. And Bernie Sanders said uh, just here like two days ago that this new oil pipeline, quote, would generate emissions equal to 37 coal plants or over 27 million cars each and every year. Bernie Sanders didn't seem like the person that tends to lie. If you listen to Bernie, I mean, he, he just doesn't seem like that type of person. I mean, you can let me know your thoughts here in the comments section. I mean, Joe Manchin's the type here that has headlines that, I mean, again, Politico and New York Times saying that he earned millions of dollars from his coal mine that he is an owner of and is now pushing a new oil pipeline and who knows what his interests are. Bernie Sanders is saying that this is going to generate emissions equivalent to equivalent to 37 coal plants and over 27 million cars each and every year. So you guys let me know your thoughts on this. Who's right, who's wrong? Who <laughs> whose side would you take? Who would you what would you vote? Would you vote yes? Would you vote no? I don't know. I mean, if I had to pick, I'd, I'd tend to, uh, if I had to choose between the two on, uh, would I take Joe Manchin's word or would I take Bernie Sanders' word? I'd probably have to lean with Bernie Sanders just uh, based on the trust factor of the two. I mean, you let me know your thoughts in the comment section, but uh, I haven't known Bernie Sanders to lie very often. Joe Manchin's trust factor, I mean, you could just read the New York Times article. You could read the political, I mean, even people in his own state question his motives. He's, I mean, there's literally articles and investigations on where he charged people from his own state millions of dollars more from his own political interests of owning these coal mines. And, I mean... Let me know your thoughts here, by all means. Uh, but now the question is, is that, uh, is this going to happen here for the whole country uh, going forward? And th these are the type of things that are affecting America potentially now. This is a massive, massive bill and may affect a government shutdown even going forward, which affects millions of Americans because there's millions of Americans' jobs 
attached to a government shutdown. If a government goes into a government shutdown, there's millions of people's uh, government jobs that go into shutdown. They get laid off instantly the uh, the day a government shutdown happens, along with a whole slew of other things that's not a good thing we want to have happen ever. <sighs> <laughs> you just let me know your thoughts here. Uh, there's no short of drama ever with Congress. Uh, and the other thing here is what, what are Republicans going to think of this? Um, Republicans tend to be more oil minded. Um, Democrats tend to be more green minded. So we actually could get Republicans voting for this, Democrats voting against this. We actually might get both sides coming in the middle here and getting some middle-minded people voting yes on this. So it could be an interesting vote here. Could be an interesting vote. This could pass because we could get some people from each side voting yes, which could be very interesting. And Senator Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, he's kind of beholden to vote for this. He kind of, you know, he he kind of gave his word to Joe Manchin that he would he would push this through because Joe Manchin pushed through the Inflation Reduction Act, even though it wasn't the bill he wanted or the Democrats wanted that he finally got something to go through. Um, you know, you can let me know your thoughts here on this. Uh, Democrats wanted a lot more and Joe Manchin, you know, basically held them hostage and only put through what Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema were willing to put through. Um, you know, and that's where the whole thing of, uh, no Republicans voted for it. No Republicans also voted for the third stimulus check package, uh, the, from last year, uh, which is also kind of the flip side of what happened in 2017 when all the Republicans passed the 2017 Trump tax cuts through the reconciliation process, which means you only need 50 votes to pass a bill in the Senate instead of the normal 60, uh, to bypass what's called the filibuster. Uh, that's when all the Republicans had control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. Republicans passed the 2017 Trump tax cuts, and not a single Democrat voted for that. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander, as my father would say. And um, so Democrats did this now twice, actually, with the third stimulus check package last year and the Inflation Reduction Act this year, which was a much more slimmed-down bill, but that's really all they could pass because of Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema. Democrats say if they could get two more seats on the board from this next election, they won't have to be kind of beholden or limited to just what Joe Manchin could pass, uh, which is what the Republicans did in 2017. But who knows what will happen after this next election. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to click the bell icon after you subscribe so you get notifications when we go live here with new videos. It's completely free to do so, and I'll keep you up to date here with everything. You can click on this video here to watch my newest video about millions of people getting checks here uh, actually this month as well and here's my newest video about social security raises up to twenty four hundred dollars so click on one of those videos next thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video